Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease, Wikipedia Article Audio Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is one of the types of fatty liver which occurs when fat is deposited in the liver due to causes other than excessive alcohol use. Non-alcoholic steatopatitis is the most extreme form of nephilt. Nephilt is the most common liver disorder in developed countries. Signs and Symptoms Causes Diet Genetics Drugs Pathophysiology Diagnosis Management Nutrition Exercise Medication Surgery Epidemiology Children Research Nephilt is related to insulin resistance and the metabolic syndrome and may respond to treatments originally developed for other insulin resistant states such as weight loss, metformin, and thiazolidindians. Up to 80% of obese people have the disease. NASH is regarded as a major cause of cirrhosis of the liver of unknown cause. Most people have a good outcome if the condition is caught in its early stages. About 12 to 25 percent of people in the United States have nephilt, while NASH affects between 2 and 5 percent of people in the United States. Most people with nephilt have few or no symptoms. Patients may complain of fatigue, malaise, and dull right upper quadrant abdominal discomfort. Mild jaundice may be noticed, although this is rare. More commonly nephilt is diagnosed following abnormal liver function tests during routine blood tests. By definition, alcohol consumption of over 20 g slash day excludes the condition. Nephilt is associated with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome, and high blood pressure. Recent research has shown that nephilt increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases, such as cardiac arrhythmias. Soft drinks have been linked to nephilt due to high concentrations of fructose, which may be present either in high fructose corn syrup or, in similar quantities, as a metabolite of sucrose. The quantity of fructose delivered by soft drinks may cause increased deposition of fat in the abdomen. Native American men have a high prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Two genetic mutations for this susceptibility have been identified, and these mutations provided clues to the mechanism of NASH and related diseases. Polymorphisms in the single nucleotide polymorphisms T455C and C482T and APOC3 are associated with fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, and possibly hypertriglyceridemia. 95 healthy Asian Indian men and 163 healthy non-Asian Indian men around New Haven. Connecticut were genotyped for polymorphisms in those SNPs 20% homogeneous wild both loci. Carriers of T455C, C482T, or both had a 30% increase in fasting plasma apolipoprotein C3, 60% increase in fasting plasma triglyceride and retinal fatty acid ester and 46% reduction in plasma triglyceride clearance. Prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was 38% in carriers, 0% wild. Subjects with fatty liver disease had marked insulin resistance. Nephilt can also be caused by some medications. Nephilt is considered to cover a spectrum of disease activity. This spectrum begins as fatty accumulation in the liver. A liver can remain fatty without disturbing liver function, but by varying mechanisms and possible insults to the liver, it may also progress to become non-alcoholic steatopatitis, a state in which steatosis is combined with inflammation and fibrosis. 
Nash is a progressive disease, over a 10-year period, up to 20% of patients with Nash will develop cirrhosis of the liver, and 10% will suffer death related to liver disease. Cigarette smoking is not associated with an increased risk of developing Nash. The exact cause of Nifold is still unknown. However, both obesity and insulin resistance probably play a strong role in the disease process. The exact reasons and mechanisms by which the disease progresses from one stage to the next are not known. One debated mechanism proposes a second hit or further injury, enough to cause change that leads from hepatic steatosis to hepatic inflammation. Oxidative stress, hormonal imbalances and mitochondrial abnormalities are potential causes for this second hit phenomenon. Common findings are elevated liver enzymes and a liver ultrasound showing steatosis. An ultrasound may also be used to exclude gallstone problems. A liver biopsy is the only test widely accepted as definitively distinguishing NASH from other forms of liver disease and can be used to assess the severity of the inflammation and resultant fibrosis. Non-invasive diagnostic tests have been developed, such as FibroTest, that estimates liver fibrosis, and Steatotest, that estimates steatosis however their use has not been widely adopted. Apoptosis has been indicated as a potential mechanism of hepatocyte injury as caspascleved cytokeratin 18 in serum slash plasma is often elevated in patients with NASH and tests based on these parameters have been developed, however, as the role of oncotic necrosis has yet to be examined it is unknown to what degree apoptosis acts as the predominant form of injury. Other diagnostic tests are available. Relevant blood tests include erythrocyte sedimentation rate, glucose, albumin, and kidney function. Because the liver is important for making proteins used in coagulation some coagulation-related studies are often carried out especially the INR. In people with fatty liver with associated inflammatory injury blood tests are usually used to rule out viral hepatitis, rubella, and autoimmune-related diseases. Hypothyroidism is more prevalent in NASH patients which would be detected by determining the TSH. It has been suggested that in cases involving overweight patients whose blood tests do not improve on losing weight and exercising that a further search of other underlying causes is undertaken. This would also apply to those with fatty liver who are very young or not overweight or insulin resistant. In addition those whose physical appearance indicates the possibility of a congenital syndrome, have a family history of liver disease have abnormalities in other organs, and those that present with moderate to advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis. No pharmacological treatment has received approval as of 2015. Some studies suggest diet, exercise, and anti-glycemic drugs may alter the course of the disease. General recommendations include improving metabolic risk factors and reducing alcohol intake. While many treatments appear to improve biochemical markers such as alanine transaminase levels, most have not been shown to reverse histological abnormalities or reduce clinical endpoints. Bariatric surgery may also be effective. Treatment of Nifold typically involves counseling to improve nutrition and consequently body weight and composition. Diet changes have shown significant histological improvement. Specifically, avoiding food containing high fructose corn syrup and trans fats is recommended. A systematic review and meta-analysis found that omega-3 fatty acid supplementation in those with Nifold slash Nash using doses approaching or higher than 1 gram daily has been associated with improvements in liver fat. The best dose of omega-3 fatty acids for individuals with Nifold slash Nash is unclear.
Epidemiological data have suggested that coffee consumption may be associated with a decreased incidence of nifold and may reduce the risk of liver fibrosis in those who already have nifold slash nash. Olive oil consumption, as part of the Mediterranean diet, is also a reasonable dietary intervention. The optimal dose of olive oil supplementation for people with nifold slash nash has not been well established. Few studies have been performed to evaluate the respective impact of a diet rich in avocados, red wine, tree nuts, or tea in people with nifold slash nash. However, limited evidence suggests that avocados may improve other areas of cardiovascular health and their addition to a balanced diet is reasonable. Red wine consumption is likely safe and may improve insulin resistance but definitive studies are lacking. Gradual weight loss may improve the process in obese patients, rapid loss may worsen the fold. Specifically, walking or some form of aerobic exercise at least 30-45 minutes daily is recommended. The negative effects of rapid weight loss are controversial, the results of a meta-analysis showed that the risk of progression is very low. Insulin sensitizers are commonly used for insulin resistance in those with nifold. Improvements in liver biochemistry and histology in patients with nifold through treatment with statins have been observed in numerous cases, although these studies were carried out on a relatively small sample of patients. Statins have also been recommended for use in treating dyslipidemia for patients with nifold. Treatment with pentoxifylline has demonstrated improvements in the histological appearance of fatty liver tissue under the microscope in many small trials. Weight loss surgery leads to improvement and or resolution of NASH in around 80% of people. The percentage of people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease ranges from 9 to 36.9% in different parts of the world. Approximately 20% of the United States population have non-alcoholic fatty liver, and the number of people affected is increasing. This means about 75 to 100 million people in the United States are affected. The rates of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is higher in Hispanics, which can be attributed to high rates of obesity and type 2 diabetes in Hispanic populations. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is also more common among men than women in all age groups until age 60, where the prevalence between sex equalize. This is due to the protective nature of estrogen. Fatty liver and NASH occur all ages, with the highest rates in the 40 to 49 year old age group. It is the most common liver abnormality in children ages 2 to 19. Pediatric non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was first reported in 1983. It is currently the primary form of liver disease among children. Nifold has been associated with the metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of risk factors that contribute to the development of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Studies have demonstrated that abdominal obesity and insulin resistance in particular are thought to be key contributors to the development of nifold. Because obesity is becoming an increasingly common problem worldwide, the prevalence of nifold has been increasing concurrently. Moreover, boys are more likely to be diagnosed with nifold than girls with a ratio of 2:1. Studies have suggested that progression toward a more advanced stage of disease among children is dependent on age and presence of obesity. This finding is consistent with previous studies in adults demonstrating the same association between age and obesity, and liver fibrosis. Early diagnosis of nifold in children may help prevent the development of liver disease during adulthood. This is challenging as most children with nifold are asymptomatic with few showing abdominal pain. Currently, liver biopsy is considered the gold standard for diagnosing nifold. However, 
this method is invasive, costly, and bears greater risk for children, and non-invasive screening and diagnosing methods would have significant public health implications for children with Nifold. The only treatment shown to be truly effective in childhood Nifold is weight loss. Many drug candidates are in clinical studies such as, ilafibranor, obidicolic acid, amiodarone, antiviral drugs, aspirin rarely as part of RISE syndrome in children, corticosteroids, methotrexate, tamoxifen, tetracycline. Medscape article on NASH, Medicine and it article on steatosis. NIH page on non-alcoholic steatopatitis, British Medical Journal article on the diagnosis and initial management of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease.